The following presentation was recorded at the 2012 Southeast Linux Fest in Charlotte, North Carolina. It is licensed under a Creative Commons license. For more information about the Southeast Linux Fest, visit www.southeastlinuxfest.org. The Southeast Linux Fest would like to thank the following Diamond Sponsors in 2012 for helping make these videos possible. A few more. Come on in. Um, so I'm going to talk to you guys about Drush today, and I know you've probably had a lot of information thrown at you today, and this probably isn't the best topic to have uh, at the very end, but I'm going to try and keep it um, quick and short and to the point. Uh, my name is Paul Thettinga. Uh, I'm from Raleigh, uh, North Carolina, and part of a, the Triangle Drupal Users Group. I've uh, been using Drupal about two and a half years, um, and Drush I, was something that I haven't used for a really long time. Um, and I was really excited to talk about it because um, it's a really, a really powerful tool. And um, if for those of you out there that aren't as uh, techy and not as comfortable with the command line, um, it's still something that I really would highly recommend um, learning because it's really going to uh, speed up your um, speed up your development process and your your Drupal uh, just basic tasks that you do on a regular basis. Um, and I, I actually I work for a company called uh, Econical Works. We do electronic health records. Uh, software. Um, we're not a Drupal shop, but we use Drupal a lot internally, um, and hopefully we'll keep using it even more. Um, so what we're going to talk about today, uh, or before we do that, let me just quick get a sense for the audience. So who knows what Drush is in this room? You probably heard it mentioned a lot today. Okay, good, most of you. Um, and then how many of you have used Drush before? Okay, so only one hand. Okay, so good, or two. All right, and then who's, who's comfortable using the command line? All right, cool, most people in here. Um, and then how many of you have been using Drupal for less than a year, roughly? All right, perfect. All right, so you guys are really, you know, kind of what I had in mind uh, for an audience, so this, is, this should be great. Um, and yeah, I hope, hopefully I'll be able to sell you guys on, on why you should use Drush um, during this time. What I'm gonna talk about uh, is Really, really quickly is, is basically what is Drush and, and why I use it, and hopefully why you should use it as well. I'm going to really quickly go through how to install Drush. Um, I'm not going to go step by step on this. There's a lot of great documentation out there. I'm going to point you to a video that takes you through step by step how to do it. Um, it would take a little more time, so I, I'm, I'm just going to kind of give you some reference on that and the, the, the few steps that you have to do to install Drush. And then what most of the time is going to be is it's going to be a demo um, of Drush. So I'm, I'm going to demonstrate some different commands, some of the, the big commands that you can use with Drush, um, and we're going to focus on that. And I'll try and leave a little time at the end for questions um, for you guys as well, too. Um, so what is Drush? Drush, it basically stands for the Drupal shell. Um, so the, most of you in here are familiar with the command line, uh, probably most likely Bash or the Born Again shell. Um, and the way that Drupal.org, um, on the project page that they define it is just uh, Drush is a command line shell and scripting interface for Drupal. Um, so it's not like a normal Drupal module. Um, that's one you know, very important thing to realize um, with, uh, with Drush. So it's, it's something that works with like all versions of Drupal, Drupal 6, 7, and 8. You install it once um, on, on your server or on your local machine, for example, and you can use it with many different sites. It's not like um, a bunch of different, a lot of the modules you've looked at today, like views, uh, features. I know there's a session on that where you got to install it on, on each site, um, but but this is something that you're going to install on your your local machine or on your server. Um, and the one thing that's really great about Drush is the documentation is really good. Um, it's a, a big reason that I I, I would recommend using it as well. Um, and then why use Drush? Uh, what are these are kind of the main reasons that I use Drush. The main one is module management. Um, as you start using Drupal, trying out modules, uh, upgrading, installing, up updating and installing modules, it can save you just so much time. I, and especially the more modules you have on a site, the more time it's going to save you. But I know for me, when I first started using Drupal, I'd go out to the, the project page, I'd download it, uh, unzip it, um, upload it on FTP. It was just you know, very time consuming. And then go in the GUI, enable the module. Drush, you can do that in one or two you know, very short commands. Um, and then lastly, what I use it for a lot is performing just routine tasks such as backup. Um, you can, you, there, it works really well with the backup and migrate module. 
those of you that are familiar with that. Um, you can do a SQL uh, dump through it, just take a, a backup of your SQL database. Um, and clearing the Drupal cache, for any of you that are dev developers in here, that's probably the one command you're gonna use the most, is drush cc, uh, which I'm gonna show you in a little bit, or drush cc all. Um, you'll love drush for that, because it going through the GUI to do that, uh, it can be kind of time consuming, especially when you do it many times a day. So drush installation, as I said, I'm just gonna basically give you the three steps that you have to do. Um, the project page, as I mentioned before, uh, on a previous slide, it's just drupal.org slash project slash drush. Um, let me just open that up. Um, so th that's the first thing that we wanna do in, in right on that Drush page, if I scroll down to the uh, recommended releases, uh, so you can see we're up to uh, 5.4. Uh, it does have the version seven in front of it, but it works with version six, version eight. Um, so the, it, the 5.4 is really the, the core version of Drush, uh, the most up-to-date version of that. Um, there, are some, there are some instructions on here but where I'll point you to is under this miscellaneous here, there's this drush.org site. Uh, and this is kept up by the, the people who uh, maintain Drush. Uh, really excellent resource. The FAQ um, and the commands are all listed here uh, by version number. I'm gonna reference this later in the presentation, but those are gonna be two of the places that you wanna uh, have an, as a reference on a regular basis. Um, so the first thing would be just to download Drush on your server on your local machine. Um, then we want to make it make sure it's executable. And then lastly, you're going to just create a symbolic link or, or update your path variable. I usually do the symbolic link. You can do either one, uh, but basically it just allows you to type drush anywhere in the command line, um, and it's going to execute drush. Um, this video that's right here, I would highly recommend this. Um, just you after you you get back, and if you haven't installed drush before, it's on the Drupalize.me website, which is a paid site, but this is actually a free video. Um, they, they do, it's like a 15 minute video of like really slow step by step uh, with installation. So if you haven't installed it before, check that out there. I know there's some other videos as well, but um, that was one I found very useful. All right, so enough of me doing slides. Let's actually see how this works. Um, and you can run, I, I'm on a Windows machine right now, but you can run it on Windows since Drush 5, but uh, I really don't like running it on Windows. So I'm actually gonna switch over to uh, uh, for I'm on VirtualBox, I have a, a virtual machine running here, so I'm, gonna, I'm running Ubuntu Linux. Uh, so let me just sign on here. Um, and I'm just gonna open up my command line. All right, great. All right, can you guys see that okay? Up in the back? All right, great. Um, okay, so I, I just have, um, yeah, Ubuntu up here, I have some test sites. I'm just gonna be running off my, my local machine. Um, and if I, I'm just gonna first, like, one of the first things that I always do if, I, if I'm logging onto a server or, or uh, a new machine and I want to see if Drush is installed, um, you can simply just type Drush. And if it's installed, it's going to spit out this long list of commands or of all these different commands right here. Um, so that's a really quick way if you want to see if Drush is installed. Uh, you can type it from any, any place on the, uh, on the command line as long as you've done, you've done that symbolic link or, or updated your path variable. So, just typing Drush will do that. I'm just gonna clear that, and I'm just gonna type Drush status. This is another uh, basic command that I just use uh, a lot too if I wanna just see if, it, uh, if it's installed and I wanna see what Drush version is installed on this machine or on the server. In this case, I have 5.4, which is the, the most recent version. Um, it also is gonna show me where my PHP configuration file is. Um, so that's kinda handy as well, to, uh, use that. Um, and I'm gonna come back to this Drush status later, when I'm actually in a Drupal root directory, it's gonna give me some more information. Um, but let me go to my web root. So I have some sites here, and my web root here is just um, just changing the directory var ww, or three w's. Um, and I'll just list all my files here. So I have um, a few Drupal sites up here. Um, now I'm just gonna change into one of those Drupal roots. So I think, if I remember right, I think the test one, is what I want, so I'm just gonna go into that directory. Oops. All right, so now I'm in my test, and now if I do that drush status again, so now you can see I get a little more information. So I get the, the right from the command prompt, I get the, the database username, um, the name of the database, 
on there as well, uh, just tell me that it can connect to the database. Again, the PHP configuration, um, also what Drupal version I'm running. This, I find this handy sometimes too if I wanna just make sure I'm on the right site because I, I have some Drupal 6 uh, and 7 sites. Um, just really cooks, gives me a high level snapshot of what version I'm on. Um, so that's what the Drush Status does when I'm in um, a root directory or a Drupal root directory. Um, and same thing again, if I just did Drush, it's gonna spit out all those commands as before. That doesn't change. All right, so now, now I wanna get a module. So I mentioned before, you know, when I first started using Drupal and using the GUI, you know, I'd go to the project page, I'd download it, I'd unzip it, have to upload it in the site's all modules folder. Um, you know, it's a time consuming process, especially when you're doing a lot of, of modules. Um, so what you can do instead, if I, if I go to a module project page, so I'm just gonna go to the flag module page and hopefully my internet's working. I know it was kind of slow. Let me see, okay, so it came up. Um, so what I'm gonna do to actually download this is the command, it's just gonna be drush, and it's gonna be DL for download. And then when I, the, the module that I wanna specify, I'm just gonna take the machine name of that module, which is basically what comes after project. So flag, um, you know, it's pretty simple, it's just flag. Some, some of the other ones, like views bulk operations or uh, backup and migrate, um, like views bulk operations, I always think is VBO, but it's actually views underscore bulk underscore operations. Um, so you have to type that exact when you're downloading it. Um, so let me go back to my command prop, prompt. I'm gonna do drush DL, and that's for download. And I'm gonna do flag. And this is gonna take a little bit longer than normal. My, the internet here is pretty slow that I'm on. Um, it would already be done if I was at home or at, at the office. Um, but, but the great part about this too is, I mentioned before, I'm, I'm on Drupal 6 and 7 sites. It automatically is gonna you know, download the latest release of whatever version of Drupal core I'm on, and it's gonna put it in that site's all uh, modules folder. Okay, so there we go. So again, that took a little longer than usual. Um, it probably would normally be under five seconds. Um, and this one downloaded two modules. So flag, if you download it, it actually comes with two the flag actions and the flag module. Um, now I need to enable that. So in, in the past, you know, what I would have done, I would have went to my, my browser. I'm on localhost here. So I'm just gonna go to test. I'd have to go to my modules page, um, you know, click on it, update it, click save. Uh, but now what I can actually do is just do drush enable um, and do, and en is short for enable and do flag, and it's gonna just prompt me, make sure I wanna do it, I'm gonna click yes. All right, so now that's, that's been enabled. Um, and one thing I didn't mention is, the doc, or I, I did mention earlier, but I haven't showed you in this, is if I wanna see a, a command, the, the documentation for it, I, just like um, with the, the Bash shell or many other shells that you've used before, um, it has great uh, instructions, right, built into it. So, for example, that the DL um, for download, if I wanted to look up what my options were at that, if, I, if you type dry, sorry, drush, <laughs> help, and then DL, um, this is actually gonna spit out uh, different options that I can pass through it. It's also gonna give me, uh, let me scroll up. So this one has quite a few options. Yeah, so here we go. So it's actually, it's gonna tell me what it does. And then it's gonna give me an example of how to actually do it. So I, I can actually use this to download Drupal core, um, which I'm gonna demonstrate later. Um, and then I can also download themes as well as modules using this command. Um, and I, I can specify, like you can see this example here, like this diff example, oops. Um, you can specify a version number, so if I don't want the most recent version of, um, of the diff module, for example, I, I, I could put in the um, at the end of it, I could put in the version number and it's gonna pull that, that exact one from Drupal.org. So that, that's a handy thing to know as well too. And then at the bottom, um, it's gonna have an alias too. So a lot of these have um, shortcuts as well, which I don't like the type. So I always look for those aliases um, for the different commands. All right, so let me just clear that. Uh, so I, I enabled that, the flag module. Now let's say I wanted to disable that module. Um, that's gonna be the, the disable or, or a DIS command. So the same thing, if I wanted to 
get information on that, I could just do drush help um, DIS. This one, the documentation is much shorter on. Um, so let me just disable. Go ahead and disable it. Uh, it's going to prompt me, and I'm going to say okay. Um, and if you don't want to be prompted every time, just like in other parts in, in, in the command line in general, if I wanted to, uh, if I did the dash Y flag and I said let's enable the flag module, um, then it's not going to prompt me. It's just going to automatically put hit yes and, and, and do that for me, not prompt me for that. Um, so that for me, that's a that's you know a huge time saver right there. Um, just especially when I'm testing out new modules, I want to bring up a dev site, um, which I'm going to show you how to install a site as well. Um, yeah, it's really really handy. And another thing you can do too. So if I want to download a bunch of modules, um, if I do drush dl, um, and I do let's say let's do flag, um, I'll do module filter. What are some views features? So I can just keep. Um, putting a space after each module, and hopefully I spelled all those right. Oh yeah, of course this is gonna take a while on this Wi-Fi. Um, so you can have a long list of, of modules too um, if you want to do multiple ones at once, pull them down and, and, uh, and download them. So that's really handy to know as well um, with this. I'm sorry? Oh, good, good question. Actually, it, okay, so this one, yep, it just prompted me saying, um, so I already have that flag module, which, yeah, I, I did first. Um, another thing that Drush is really good with is the, like, prompting you for things and warning you about things. So I could say no here, which I will in this case. Um, so that killed everything, basically. But if I didn't do that, and I did views, and I did features, um, and I hit download, I'm not going to do it because it's going to be really slow again. Um, oh, I forgot the download or the DL. Oops. But uh, not crush. It's getting late in the day. All right. So if I did that and I hit enter, then it would do features and then download views because as long as I haven't downloaded those already. Yep. Um, that's a good question. I, I can actually test it. Um, I actually don't know off the top of my head. I'll just do the flag this time. We'll see what happens. Because, um, yeah, I guess I normally never use it with uh, the download one. I normally use it more with enable or disable. Yeah. Okay, yeah, you're right. If, oh, if I download two different ones? Uh, I don't even know if it'll let you do that, to be honest. I think, I think it would, yeah, because it's still going to be the same machine name, so it's going to, I think, overwrite with whatever's in that folder. So, so yep, you were right. So that dash Y flag would, would do that. Um, now, if you wanted to, so this is just, I have a clean install. I, I want to download di modules, enable, disable. Now, if, I, if I'm logging onto a site and I just want to see what's installed, uh, for example, I want to see the module list. Um, there's a really handy uh, command. So I do drush, and it's PML, which I believe stands for project management list. I'll look at the documentation to be sure. But th this is going to spit out um, all the, the uh, modules that I have installed on the site. So it's just like going to your site's all um, the site's all modules folder, or, or going through it through the GUI. Um, so let me do, oops. Yeah, so I guess it just says, I think it stands for project management list, but um, it has some different options here as well too. So w one that I use a lot is this uh, dash dash no core. So if I, if I just wanna, I don't wanna see the core modules, I just wanna see the contrib modules that are installed on this site. Uh, if I do that same command again, and I just do no dash core. All right, so flag, flag actions, uh, and backup and migrate. I only have those three modules on here. So that's a really handy thing to know. And, 
And another thing too that's really nice, so if I have, if I have a site with you know, 50, 100, however many modules on it, if I do that drush PML, um, you can, uh, just like in other parts of the command line, you can do, or other uh, shells, uh, I use that pipe character, so um, those of you that aren't familiar with it, it's just between, I guess, your backspace and your enter, um, or the slash, um, shift slash. And if you do the grep command, um, I, I do flag, for example, so if I just wanted to real quickly check is flag installed on this, I can do grep. Uh, that pipe will basically search that initial output uh, and just filter for flag. So that's some, I use that a lot. Um, it's really handy um, if I'm moving between multiple sites or I have some test or development sites I'm working on, you know, don't remember if, uh, you know, what module I have on there. Um, yeah, it's really a handy thing to do. Um, and you can also use that too with the, when I first logged on, I just hit drush and all those commands, um, you know, were listed there. I mean, I can do the same exact thing. So if I can do, um, if I'm looking for a particular command, like the PML commands, um, it, that, that's gonna uh, show that as well too. Uh, just drush and then do the, the pipe character in the grep PML. So it tells me what that, that particular thing does. Um, or in this case, if I do PM, all right. Oh yeah, so project manager. So these are all the different uh, commands that you can see that are related to, to modules. Um, so enable, disable, uh, info, list, et cetera. Um, so so that's, that's one of the most helpful things, especially for new people just starting out in Drupal, is just being able to quickly manage those modules. Um, also, what you can do is you can easily update modules. So um, if, I'm, if I'm on a site, um, if I go to my, let me go to my local host here. And I have a couple scenarios here. So I, I just created a site called Old Modules. Let's see if it loads. Um, let me run the Drush command first while we're waiting. Another reason I like Drush, you don't have to wait for the, <laughs> the browser to load. Um, so let me go to old modules. Oops, if I can type. Oh, I got two, that's why. All right, awesome. Um, and if I go to do Drush help and I do PM update, um, what PM update is, or I guess this one has a shortcut up. I didn't realize that, that's nice. Um, this is gonna go and look for any, any of my modules that, that um, either have like a security release or just a new version, could be a new enhancement or, um, or something that was fixed or a bug that was fixed. Um, and, and basically what this is, is like if you're, if you're on your site and you go to reports and uh, I guess avail available updates, and you know a lot of times when you have a, a module that needs updating, you get that big red thing at the top of your page that is, you know, is always at the top of the, your modules page. Um, so that's what this is gonna do. If I do um, through Drush, um, okay, so I think I gotta run cron too, but let me just do Drush. Um, I'll do PM update, I guess I won't use the alias. <laughs> so it's gonna automatically go out to drupal.org. It's gonna check all the modules that um, you have on your site, go see if there's a new version. And eventually it's gonna tell me if there's something new or not. All right, so there we go. So you can see flag comes back and views come back. They both come back, so they, they say update available. Uh, it's still loading as well. But um, so chaos tools is up to date. Um, if I scroll, back up, it checks, it also checks Drupal core as well. So you can see uh, Drupal core uh, 7.14, that is up to date. And then Chaos Tools, which is a module, um, is up to date as well. Um, but it's gonna prompt me here that if I wanna update the flag and the views module. Um, so this is really handy, especially if you have a lot of modules um, or multiple sites. Um, I can go in here, I can just, it's gonna automatically back this up for me too. You'll notice it prompts you here. Um, it's gonna back up the old version of that, that module or theme or whatever you're updating. Um, I should hit yes, because it's gonna take a little while. Um, so it's gonna go ahead and do that. Um, and, it, and this, 
again, it was just a hu huge time saver for me. Um, and uh, the more slates you have, the more, obviously, the more of a time saving it's going to be for you. All right, and so there, that one completed, the flag module completed. And then it does give you the path uh, where it backed it up to, the, the previous version. And then views, I have views is kind of a big module. That wasn't a good one to do. Maybe cancel out if it doesn't come up soon. But you can definitely see where this is going to be helpful, um, yeah, even on a small site. But certainly, the more more modules, the the better. All right, yeah, I'll just cancel out of that. All right, but it would have updated views, but views is just a kind of a big module. Um, so I showed you guys how to download a, a module, enable a module, um, disable a module. So now let's actually go ahead and, and bring a new site up. Um, this is you know, probably the next thing for me. For, from a development standpoint, it's just it's so easy to create a clean uh, Drupal. Oh. That I'm actually not sure. Does anyone know? Yeah, yeah, that I'm not sure about. Um, I, I believe it still does, but yeah, it may just af affect it um, somehow. But yeah, yeah, not sure. Yep, no problem. Um, oh, so if I wanted to download Drupal, um, I'm just going to get back to my, my web root here. I'm just do an ls. Um, will, I can use that dl command again. So I could do drush dl. And if I just do Drupal, that's going to just go out and grab 7.14, which is the current version of Drupal, just and put it in this directory. Um, but if I actually go to um, the help menu, there's an option, which I think is near the top. Uh, so yeah, Drupal project rename. Um, so if I just download it, it's going to download it. It's just going to call it Drupal 7.14. That's just going to be the file it's in. But if I want to download it and rename it in one step, um, I can use this command. Um, so I like to use this one a lot um, when I download. Drupal, just so I know what I'm using it for. So let's do that. Oops. And I'll paste it. And I'm just going to call it Fred. That way I'll know what it is. Um, so it's going to go out there and do that. So when it downloads this, I'm, I'm still going to have to um, open up the browser. I'm going to have to do the install.php file um, if I just did this. but. I'm lazy, and I don't like to go through the web browser and do that. So I'm going to show you guys, once this finishes, I'm going to show you another step that you can do um, that's going to automatically go out and create your database um, as well um, and make a copy of your settings.php file um, and, and, and change the permissions on that. So this, let me let this keep going, I guess. Um, so I, so it's just basically adding another folder. So if I go to, let me just go through my browser because that's slow. So if I go to localhost, it's it's basically just going to create another. Or actually, there it is, Fred. So I, that's how I just have it set up right here. Um, so it it just downloads the whole Drupal folder and then renames the the Drupal folder. Okay. So then, all right. So I just downloaded while we we're by switch screens. Um, and then what I can do next, um, I, I'm going to use this, this site install is what it's called. So if I go to help, drush help, again, SI is short for site install. Um, this is what's actually will go and create. So you would still have to create your database. You still have to copy your settings PHP file, change the permissions. Uh, but this is actually going to go do that in one, in one uh, swoop. So there's an, I think there's an example in here. Um, let's see. Yeah, so it's this Drush site install right here. Um, and I'm actually, I'm going to copy and I'm, I actually have it. I cheated, so I knew this was going to take a while, so I just copied and pasted it in here. But I'll explain what it is when I am, uh, get back to the command prompt.
oops, I have to go. So this is giving, again, it's good at giving you feedback, so I'm not in a, a, a Drupal root directory. So I gotta go to Fred, which I, oops. So let me try that again. I'll just clear it to. And there we go. All right, so it's gonna warn me, just saying it's gonna create a new database in a, a settings PHP file, but I'm gonna say that's okay. So, so basically what this command um, is doing, so it's here it's just going to localhost basically. Um, so I'm doing drush si for site install again, putting in this um, option here for db url, and I'm just running on localhost here. Um, and then root is just what I have for my, my password on my local machine. And I'm a Chicago Bears fan, so this is, <laughs> and I don't use this password for anything else, so <laughs> um, just on my local machine here, but that's the, the password for the database. And then uh, localhost slash Fred, so where I wanted that installed. Um, and then what this, uh, what this will do too is it just creates a default. Actually, I think in Drush 4, it used to just do admin, admin, so username, admin, password, admin, but I think in Drush 5, they just changed this, so now there's a, um, a password that's gonna give me. So I can actually, oops, take that, I'm gonna copy that uh, password, and let me open up my browser, and I'll go to this Fred site, just to show you guys that I have a new site here. Let's go to admin, and let's paste that password in, and what's that? Oh, yeah, um, yeah, I think you can actually. Yeah, you, yeah, you definitely can. Yeah, there's some user commands. Um, actually, I'll, I'll show you that too. Um, I can't do it through the GUI, but yeah, you could do it through Josh as well. Um, so if I did, uh, oops, I think it's, oh yeah, so there's user dash password, I guess is the one, or UPWDs, so I could do it that way too if I didn't want to copy and paste it. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I have a clean Drupal site installed, and, and again, that would be even faster if you had a little bit faster internet, but it's, you know, if you ha it's really easy uh, to install sites that way, um, just a, a clean Drupal site that you want to use. Um, there, there's also a new feature in um, Josh 5, I'm trying to think. I know um, Mark Shropshire demonstrated it in his presentation. Uh, let me see if I can find it quick. Uh, I think it's the, uh, no, it's not the make generate. I can't remember now, but there's a, a do you know what it is, do you remember it? Oh, go ahead. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, that would be the case. Yeah, but so what it will do, like any contrib modules, um, it would, if you use that make file, it automatically go out and grab, you know, the latest version of those, or if you specified a version, it would grab those from drupal.org. But, but yeah, but the, the custom ones, um, if you, um, I think, I think you could, if you had them on, like on GitHub or something, I think you can, you could do it that way, like you could reference, yeah, I haven't I haven't used make files a lot, but I'm pretty sure um, someone else was demonstrating it. I think they were yeah, actually taking like their address from Git and and grabbing the latest version from their Git repository. So, all right. Um, anyway, so that 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 would be how you install a site. I can't remember what that the new thing was in Drush Five. Um, I can look it up later. Um, all right, so. I guess any questions on that site install part? Or are you guys totally fried right now? <laughs> All right, cool. All right, so that that's a really handy um, thing as well. So the modules down in the modules um, in in quickly installing Drupal. Um, another thing you can do too, um, if if I want, so if you notice like that site name, it just says site install. Um, so another command that I could do. Um, if I want to just quickly change that through Josh, um, 
it's Drush, and I believe it's, no, it's site underscore name. I could check the help, but I think this is right. So I'll do Fred. Uh, no, ch -ch -ch -ch. I think I might have written it down. Oh, I know what it is. So it's V, I forgot V set, I think. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, V set for variable set. That's what I forgot. So if I did help V set, then I think it would come up. All right, so just to prove to you that worked. So just changed it to Fred. Um, and that's basically going into the variables table in your database for Drupal. There, I don't use that a whole lot, but there's a whole bunch of other variables that you can change using that V set command as well too. Um, and again, you can get it through here. Um, or if you don't like to look at all these options through um, the command line, go to that site that I mentioned before, the drush.org, um, which I think, I, yep. You can get it, all that information here as well too. So if you, um, you wanted to, get, to see the, the variable set here too, um, you, know, you can get it that way as well if you don't want to look at it through the, um, through the command line. Have you the oh, sure. Yeah, so I did, um, actually I can go back to the command I did. So I did, um, yeah, so it's site underscore name, that's the variable in the uh, variables table in database, and then just the quotes around um, uh, whatever you want for the, for the title. All right. Like right now, if I, did, if I change it? No, I can, I can change it to whatever I want. What's that? Yeah, or this is just the, the title of, like the main title of your, your site. Like that's always gonna be on the, the top of, or it's like the, yeah, the variable that's always at the top, top header of, depending on what theme you use, I guess, but. Um, um, Actually, well, I can through the database, but that's what, or through SQL, but I'm trying to think. I don't believe you can go in and edit a node as far as I know. Um, yeah, directly through there. I know I wouldn't recommend doing that. <laughs> yeah, so I wouldn't, that's the only, but yeah, I don't think there's any, as far as I know, there's no way to, yeah, like open, open it up in V or, uh, or VI or, um, or some editor. Yep, yeah, there's, yeah, or is that what you're referring to? Like the, okay, because yeah, there is a develop generate module, um, which like, again, with the test site, if you want to just get a bunch of content, that has Drush integration. Um, so I can actually say generate 100 nodes and make them 50 stories and 50 um, articles or whatever content type I want. So that, that's one thing, but in terms of like just typing out a node, as far as I know, I don't think that's, that's possible. Um, so how many people went to the features presentation today? A few of you? Okay. So another um, really good thing about Drush, and if you, if you use features, you, I really would highly recommend using Drush for that as well too. Um, I think I have a site here. Yeah, so it's the features one. So if I do drush um, fl, which is features list, this is gonna go and find all those features on my site. Um, and it's really handy too because it'll say, um, it'll say the state of them here. So I, I guess all these ones that I have um, right now are, none of them are overridden. Um, but if it was overridden, like somebody had made a change to one of the features and I, and I quickly wanted to revert it back, um, there's, if I go to Drush again and I do grep, I think it's FR. Yeah, so it's features revert. Uh, so features revert, that, that's really a handy feature, or handy command as well, uh, or revert all too. So if I wanted to revert all features back to previous state, um, I made some changes, I don't like them, I wanna bring it back into the, the code, the state that the code's in, um, that's an option as well. Um, also, I mentioned backing up before. So I think I have a, a site with, oops, one, 
too far. Can I keep doing that today? Let's see. I believe it's my Drupal 7 site. I think I have the backup and migrate, migrate module on here. So I'm gonna do the PML again. I'll just do grep and I'll do backup. Okay, yep, so I do have it. Um, so if I do, I believe it's BB. Yeah, so it's BB is the alias. Um, so if I do drush BB, if I have backup and migrate set up, what this is gonna do, it's just automatically, if I ha as long as I have it set up, I have a default folder uh, for my database to go into through this. It's gonna automatically go ahead and do, yep, there we go. Um, so it's gonna put that in my manual backups directory, uh, whatever I specified in the backup and migrate module. So this is something I use all the time too. Like if I'm gonna make a change on the, the dev site, for example, or a test site, um, it, it can really quickly just get a, a, um, a backup of the database, um, just typing drush bb. So really, really handy um, to use that as well. Um, I mentioned that you, another thing too that's nice about this is you can do SQL um, through this as well. So if I wanted to connect to the database and just run a quick SQL query. Um, oh yeah, so actually if I do drush, um, again I can't, I'm trying to remember what it is. I thought I could, maybe, I think they're all under BAM, oops. Oh yeah, so restore. So BAM, I guess BAM dash restore. Yep. Yeah, so if you do the drush pipe grep BAM, that'll show you all the commands that you can do. Um, and if the first time you, if you just install back of a migrate and try and run it, you'll get an error, because you have to set up the, the directory that you want um, your database backups to go into. Um, but getting back to the, the SQL, um, if I wanted to just run a quick SQL query, for example, um, here's the, the, the different SQL commands that you have. So it, through the command line, let's say for example, I just wanted to look up um, some information on a, a particular user ID. So if I go drush and S, SQLQ, um, and then I'm gonna put my query in, so. Uh, let's do, and if you don't know SQL, don't, it's all right, I'll just. So I, oh, oh, I forgot my, all right, thanks. Let's try that again. Ah, there we go. Okay, so it's kind of a mess, but um, it did return information about user ID number one, or if I wanted to do. What's, I'm sorry. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha, okay. Yep. That. Oh, okay, I always do that. <laughs> ah, okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, yeah. Yeah, one of the reasons I wanted to do this session too, I, I, I'm not really the most techie person, so I, I yeah, so I, I, I didn't use Drush for a long time, and I wish I would have started using it sooner, because, yeah, so it's, yeah, it's really handy. Um, but yeah, this is another way you can access, you know, SQL, um, you know, obviously if you're doing a lot of queries, you probably want to use uh, work, SQL Workbench or something else, but, um, but it's handy if I just wanted to look up some information real quickly. All right, so we're getting close on time. Let me just see, I had, I think, one or two other things I wanted to show you, but I'll keep it short. Um, oh, so updating Drupal, that's kind of a big one. Uh, it's, it's pretty much the same as uh, when I did the uh, updating the modules. So let me just switch to another site, this old Drupal that I set up, I think it's on, if I do a drush status again, uh, you can see it's on, yeah, 7.13. Um, so that's the one I want, but if, if I wanted to verify if it was up to date, I would do again, PM update. 
Uh, it might be a little slow here. Uh, but if I don't know if you guys have ever done the a core upgrade manually, it can be kind of a pain. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. So when I, the first time I did this on Drush, I was like, oh my, like, oh my god, I can't put, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so you, you definitely wanna back, back up everything before you do this, especially the first, like before you really trust Drush and you, or you trust, trust yourself that you're typing the right commands and stuff. Um, but it, oh man, it's, it saves you so much time. Uh, so yeah, so it's gonna come back, it's gonna tell me that there's an update available, um, and then it's gonna give me a warning here, like if I made changes to my HT access file, um, back that up, yeah, you definitely do an FTP backup, you know, back up everything, um, you know, database backup, all that. It does, I think it does back it up for you automatically too, but I still would you know, just do it to be safe. I'm kind of paranoid like that. Um, so let me do this update. Um, and then another nice thing about this too is, uh, a lot of times too, or when you update modules, you'll have to update the database as well too. Um, you'll have to do the update, um, oh, it's still going. So you have to do the update.php script. Um, I can actually do that right through um, Drush. Uh, so here we go, it just updated as well. Uh, where normally you have to be logged in as the root or UID one on Drupal, but I can actually do that through Drush. So that, for me too, that's a really nice uh, feature about using Drush. Um, so th this is gonna spit out, or it did spit out basically all the information about what it updated. Um, it just did those updates. Um, it's gonna tell me where the backup was saved as well. Um, I'm up to 7.14. Um, if I do the Drush update, it's actually update DB. I, th it's, I don't think it's, yes, yeah, so it doesn't have any updates required, but um, it already went through and did that. Uh, but that's, you can actually do that right through Drush as well. Um, so that, yeah. So one, one reason to use Drush, one really major reason is updating Drupal core. It, it, it makes life so much easier. Um, update. Oh yeah, it's the same thing as running, um, there's a file, it's up, uh, update.php. Oh, you know, okay, yep, that's what Drush, yeah, update DB, that's what that, yep, yeah, it runs that. So, um, so yeah, we're almost out of time, so I think that's all that I had. Um, you, got, you got a question? Okay. Yeah, do you mind the uh, Drush file upgrade? Um, upgrade I actually have not. Um, I, oh yeah, thank you. <laughs> so the question was if I've ever used the, Dr the Drush site upgrade command, which, um, goes from, if you're going through like a major core upgrade, so a version like six to seven or yeah. you know, five to six, that I have not. Um, you got, you got set up an alias and yeah, yeah, I didn't even get into the aliases at all too. Um, is it? Oh, okay, yeah, that I don't have experience with. I'm, I'm gonna have to update a Drupal 6 site soon, so that's probably something I'll learn well but in the upcoming months, but yeah, right now I don't know it. Yeah, and you can actually, thanks for mentioning that, because aliases too, I, actually in my demo site, I don't have any of those, but I keep switching between different Drupal roots, but if I'm using an alias, um, if I have like a dev site, I can just do, if I call it dev, I can just do drush at dev status or whatever command I want to run, and then drush at live, or and call it whatever I want, but it's, you know, it doesn't matter what directory I'm in. So that's you know, something down the road that I would recommend too. Um, I, there's a file that you do it in. Um, I don't think I have it. It's probably, I bet it's on the. Yeah. Yeah. There's, they have actually the documentation, if you download, when you download Drush, they have a bunch of examples too, and they have some example aliases. So I basically just followed those verbatim, and yeah, it was really. Uh, pretty easy. And you, you can write your own Drush commands too, like if you have a module, um, and they have an example, um, I think it's like, I think it's like called make me a sandwich or something. <laughs> they, okay, yeah, so yeah, it, it's like you tell Drush, tell it to make you a sandwich, I think it only makes you a sandwich if you're logged in as root or something like that, but. Um, that's the example it uses, but yeah, it really has good documentation. 
Um, if you look at any, um, any module you download, it has drush.inc at the end of it, too. That means that it has um, uh, drush commands with that module as well. Yep, go ahead. Um, that's a good question. I'm, I'm guessing through, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm not actually 100% sure on that. Um, yeah, I mean, you, you definitely, obviously, have to have, you know, SSH access you know, to your server uh, to be able to do it. A lot of, like, shared hosts, you know, you, you don't get that, so that's, I know, like, Hot Drupal, that's out here, that even their base plan, you can do that, but, yeah, as far as I know, I think you need it. It would have to be installed. Yeah. Well, I think you, you, it's an usually an additional fee to get the SSH access. I, I actually, I don't. Oh, yeah, no, they should they should allow it then. I, I haven't used GoDaddy and. Okay. Really? Okay. Okay. Yeah, because I haven't used. I uh, we run most of our sites internally, so we have access to yeah, most everything. Um, but but I know that's one complaint that people have with shared hosts is yeah they. Can't use Drush always. Any other questions? You guys still awake? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I I started doing a bunch of slides, and I'm like, you know what? It's I like took half of them out because I'm like, it's it's hard to de like to talk about. You have to really see it in action. So, all right, cool. Oh, another question. Just to make to make sure that it is. Oh, I know, either just you can just do drush. Oh, so the question was how how do you check if um, drush was in, installed? So w what you can do is uh, you can even just type drush. If you get all these commands, you know it's installed. If 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 it's not installed, it's going to say unknown command drush. Um, but what I also do I do drush status. Um, I think there's even a command to do. I want to say which. Drush, oh yeah, I guess that just shows, that's where my, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? Oh, and then make it executable? Oh, so it, it basically, are you, are you familiar with, um, yeah, like with, the command line, how to add, a pr yeah, like u dot or u dot x, for example, like uh, chmod u dot x, um, the Drush file. And actually, that video that I um, mentioned to, she she actually does it too. Like she shows you how, the exact command that you need to type. Yeah. Good. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, didn't mention that as well. Yeah, definitely, definitely. All right, anyone else? All right, well, I'm done, you guys are. When we created Asterisk over a decade ago, we could not have imagined that Asterisk would not only become the most widely adopted open source communication software on the planet, but that it would impact the entire industry in the way that it has. Today, Asterisk has found its way into more than 170 countries and virtually every Fortune 1000 company. The success of Asterisk has enabled a transition of power from the hands of the traditional proprietary phone vendors into the hands of the users and administrators of phone systems. 
Using this power, our customers have created all sorts of business changing applications, from small office phone systems to mission critical call centers to international carrier networks. In fact, there's even an entire country whose communications infrastructure runs on Astros. Digium has always been about creating technology that expands communications capabilities in ways that we could never have imagined. And that's part of what's game changing about Digium. Today, we're doing it again. This time by introducing a new family of HDIP phones that extends control of the user all the way to the desktop. The launch of these new products represents the next phase in Digium's history of innovation. These are the first and only IP phones designed to fully leverage the power of Asterisk. When we first discussed our expectations for building a family of phones for use with Asterisk, our requirements were pretty simple. We asked the team to build the phones such that they were easy to install, integrate, provision, and use. I think you'll soon agree our engineers have delivered on that goal. User feedback is validating that when it comes to operation with Astra based systems, including our own SwitchFox-based product, these are the easiest to use, best integrated, most interoperable products on the market today. The Digium family of phones will initially include three IP desk phones, uniquely designed to complement any Asterisk or SwitchFox-based solution. These phones are different for a number of reasons. First, they're exclusively designed for use with Asterisk. Secondly, we've made it really easy to auto-discover and provision the phones. Next, we've made it easy for the phones to access information inside of Asterisk, allowing tight coupling between an application and the phone. Additionally, we've created an applications engine that allows users and developers to create and run their own apps on the phone. And finally, we've done all of this at a very compelling price point. At Digium, we're always thinking of ways to give our customers the best value in business phone systems and also give them the power to create their own solutions for any communications challenge. We'll continue to push the boundaries, not only to make Asterisk cooler and faster and more technologically feature rich, but to make Asterisk and VoIP communications even easier. And together, we'll change the way the world communicates. Again. Cloud stacks are everywhere. This is the way to, to better utilize uh, all your resources and it makes managing all your resources pretty easy. All of the innovation is happening in open source. The, the collaborative nature and of the uh, you know of the community and, and the speed at which these uh, these you know these these deficiencies these bugs are getting discovered and, and fixed is a uh, thing that really shows the power of the you know of the open source community. It is global, and it's definitely because of the users. Community people are extremely friendly and uh, always ready to help. If you go on IRC any day, you'll see these guys helping each other out, and they're all doing it like in a selfless manner. The product is transparent for everyone. Everyone can look at the code base. Um, everyone can see how CloudStack is, is being built. Nothing, nothing is proprietary. Everything is open. In many ways, it's absolutely vital to the, to the ongoing health of CloudStack. The most exciting event uh, in recent memory for me uh, was our first developer boot camp. Uh, and you know, our call gave people, I think, maybe two weeks notice to come attend. I was expecting 25 or, or 30 people. Uh, so we ended up with uh, 87 people uh, and had to go get more chairs uh, into the room twice. Everything within cloud computing is commodity and is open source. And so I, I don't think that you will, uh, you, you'll see anywhere where open source is not pervasive in cloud computing. And so I, I, think it's, uh, I think it's an assumption. I think when you talk about cloud computing, you're really talking about open source cloud computing. CloudStack is a robust solution for large deployments. You have dozens of data centers and thousands of servers in each data center. Uh, these um, uh, hardware is going to fail. And CloudStack is designed to handle, number one, that mass scale. Number two, it's designed to handle the failure that inevitably happens uh, in large deployments. We started working on CloudStack over four years ago, uh, and you know it was the original set of people working on it uh, had a background of delivering software to telcos and service providers. 
lots of QA, lots of users actually using it. High availability is the key feature. Uh, multiple hypervisor support, uh, different network models, you can pick up whatever suits you better. Cloudstack management server can be deployed in different physical machines. It definitely has a huge footprint, it's being deployed everywhere. There's a major movie studio that uh, um, they were using Cloudstack, they were using it to transcode video, and I thought that was terribly fascinating. What I found more fascinating is what they did during lunch, where they would spin up uh, you know, 50 or 60 game servers, and then as soon as lunch was over, they would destroy all the instances and go back to doing real work. Cloudstack is vast. Uh, it touches so many different aspects, and there's no one person that's kind of like a master of all those realms. I think Cloudstack as a project is going to be uh, one of the leaders simply because it's some of the most featureful and, and, uh, and robust platforms out there. I don't see any limits with the cloud stack.